Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing SOS's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. SOS Limited is a cryptocurrency miner and big data marketing and solutions provider. The company is headquartered in China and was founded in 2004. It went public in 2017 and currently trades on the Nasdaq. It purchased 575 crypto mining rigs to be delivered on 430. The CEO said, we are optimistic about the future of cryptocurrencies and Ethereum. This is part of our overall strategy to develop blockchain based environments, which will be a core part of our growth in 2021 and beyond. SOS was originally a consumer lending company called China Rapid Finance, but has changed its business model to mainly focus on crypto mining. There is a pending lawsuit against SOS. If you held its stock between 722.20 and 225.21, you may be eligible for compensation. The company misrepresented its location, types of mining rigs, and its existence of mining rigs. The address they listed in SEC filings is actually the address of a hotel, not its headquarters. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company. 740 million market cap, they're trading at 412 a share, and they have 180 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company, you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. They had negative free cash flow in 2017, 18, and 19, they had their first positive in a trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative every year except in a trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company and that seems to be decreasing each year from 93 million down to 33 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue and the difference is the gross profit. Their gross profit decreases each year. Below that is operating expenses and then operating income. And they have negative operating income every year. They currently do not have any debt, so they don't pay interest payments. Below that is other income and expenses. Since they had positive 15 million in other income and expenses, that's why they had positive net income in the trailing 12 months. But I would focus on operating income when I look at the income statement, not net income. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates or loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they had positive free cash flow in the trailing 12 months, negative in prior years. They received $85 million from their IPO in 2017. They've been using that $85 million to run their business since they have negative operating cash flow most years. The only debt it looks like they issued was half a million in 2017. Let's look at the capital structure. $2 million of equity, zero debt. So they're 100% equity. Their WAC is 13.8%. And that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows we also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's 373 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $273 million. We divide that by 180 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 152. They're trading at 412, so they're trading at a 171% premium. It's a sell according to the model. It was really hard to value this company because I couldn't really estimate their future free cash flows based off of their business model. So what I did is I took their highest free cash flow, which was in the trailing 12 months, and I doubled it every year. I could not find any analyst valuing or pricing this stock. This is the stock price since it IPO'd, so it looks like it broke through $100, but it came all the way down, so it's really struggled since its IPO. This stock has gone up 300% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 52%. The 52 week low was 91 cents. The high was about $16. And the stock is trading above its 200 day, but below its 50 day moving average. This is a really liquid stock. 49 to 70 million shares are traded each day. Only 0.04% of the shares are held by institutions. 
and about 10% of the shares are shorted. In the past 7 days and 30 days, this stock has really struggled, but in the past 90 days, the stock is up 73%, much better than its industry of 8.5% and a market of 6.5%. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you could have sold out about $17,000 at one point, but if you're still holding on, you'd be at $6,200 today. The biggest shareholder is Intracoastal Capital at 30%. The next four shareholders are four investors that do not work at the firm. They all own 2.15%. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 32.5. The median is 22.4. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 387.6. So investors are paying $388 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is 22.5, much worse than the median and average. Price to book is 382, also worse than the median and average. Their return on invested capital is negative since they have negative EBIT. Their ROE is 99%. That's mainly because of that large amount in other income and expenses. Their current ratio is 3.5, so they can cover their current liabilities three and a half times. And their current assets are 600 million of cash, 1.3 million of receivables, 17 million of prepaid assets, and 54 million of assets held for sale. They do seem to be well capitalized. They had 3 million of free cash flow and 52 million of working capital. So they have $54 million of funding. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 18 companies in the same industry as SOS. And if SOS has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse than all the price multiples. They have a high current ratio. They have an inflated ROE of 99%. They have no debt. And they're a really small company in terms of market cap. And of course, they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 171% premium. But this is a really risky stock. A lot of shady things are going on, but if you time it right, you can make a lot of money. I personally wouldn't touch this stock with a 10 foot pole. I rank their free cash flow as five out of 10, their revenue one out of 10, and their ratio is three out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.